Building websites with WordPress is an incredibly rewarding way of building a website. However, there are going to be times where you come across a situation where you're not really sure how to build something and you have to get a bit creative. Well, in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how we can take some creative flair and we can create something like this. We've got this nice, simple tabbed interface that allows us to flip between the latest tutorials, popular tutorials and top courses. Now, obviously, your content could be anything you want and you don't have to use a tabbed interface. You could use accordions, lots of different things. But what you are going to need is a little bit of knowledge when it comes to working with Elementor Pro, creating templates and things like that. And also when it comes to working with WordPress itself. If that's not the case, there's tons of videos in this channel that will get you up to speed. And I'll put a couple in the description below to help you out. And then once you're comfortable, you can jump back in and take a look at how you can create something a little bit more advanced like this. Okay, so let's take a look at how we start building this out. So I've gone over to the dashboard of WordPress, we're in the pages section, and I'm creating a new page. So what we're going to do, first of all, is give this a name. So we're going to call this Project History. We're going to break this down into various different steps as part of our architecture-based business. We're going to have current projects on one tab, and we're going to have past or historical projects in another tab. And the technique is very, very simple, but what it's going to do is it's going to open up a range of possibilities, and you can expand this as much as you want. So first thing we do, we'll create and publish that page. I'm not going to go into Elementor to create any content in there right now. We don't need to do that just yet. What we do need to do, though, is create some basic templates that will contain the information, the listings, that, for example, that we want to use inside these particular tabs. So the first thing we need to do is find a way of categorizing our images. To do that, we're going to use tags. Now, you could use various different methods, but I find tags is a very nice way of doing something like this. So we're going to come up to our posts, and we're going to go to All Posts. Now, as you can see, I've got a range of different posts inside here for different projects. And if we take a look at the tags, you can see we've got things like industrial, commercial, industrial, and so on. So we've grouped those together in one way. However, we can use tags in other ways. We don't have to just limit them to things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into this first of all, this geometrics. We're going to edit this one. We're going to create a new tag. So we're going to call this current. And we're going to say add. That now gives that tag. So we're going to update that. And for the next one, we're going to come back out of this, go to all posts. And as you can see now, we've got current is listed as one of our tags. So we're going to come to the next one, which is glass world. We're going to edit that one. And we're going to just put this historic. And we'll say add. Now, once we create a tag and assign it, we can then use that over and over and over again, whatever we want to. So let's just update that page. And now we can use those to filter data. So I'll go through and add in a couple more in there so we get everything easy, either set up as a historic or it's going to set up as a current project. So I'm going to pause the video, make those changes, and then we're going to start building the templates that are going to actually go through and list these different sort of projects. So with all our tags applied, we can now go over into the template section of Elementor Pro. We're going to come into the saved template section. And from there, we're going to create a new section. So we're going to say, click on that, add a new section, and we'll give this a name. And we'll just call this current project. We'll let that load in the Elementor editor. We don't need any of these blocks or pages or templates. We're going to close that down from there. And now we can go in and start creating the templates we want to use for this first tab. Click add in a new single column. And from there, we're going to come in and we're going to add in a new section. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and we're going to choose from the pro section, we're going to choose posts. So we're going to drag that and drop that into there. Now that pulls in all of the posts. So obviously that's not what we want. So what we need to do is come down to the query section and underneath there, you can see we've got source and it says posts and we can choose pages and so on. But what we're interested in is the include or exclude. So we say include, we can click on there and we have an option for term or author. Now, even though it says term, that means things like uh, the, the sort of tags that we're using. So we can say term and from underneath there, you can see it says all. And again, it's going to show everything. If we click on there, you can see it says, please enter one or more characters. So this is current project. So we're just going to type in current. We'll start that off and you see tags is current. So it knows that we're pulling in a tag because it's a term and we've searched for current. So now we're only displaying the current projects that have been sort of tagged with current. Now, obviously, we can go through and we can set things up like pagination if we have multiples in there, but we're going to keep this as a very nice, simple, clean tab. So I'm going to come back to layout. In there, we can choose from classic or cards or full content, which is the new sort of layout that you have as part of Elementor Pro 2.7. But we could, if we wanted to, use something like Elementor Custom Skin, and we could create our own custom layout for this if we wanted to. We're not going to worry about that. We're going to keep this really simple. We're going to choose cards because that's a nice, clean layout. 
We're going to get rid of some of the things we don't want. So we're going to keep this to just be in three projects. We're going to get rid of the six in there and just put three in. Show image, that's perfectly fine. We can set it to masonry if we wanted to. We'll increase the size of the image a little bit. I'm going to come down and you can see we can choose the title, the excerpt and so on. So it's up to you what you want to put in. I don't want comments. I don't want dates in there. And I don't want the read more. I don't want the badge and I don't want the avatar. So we now have a very clean and simple layout. So we're going to publish that and we've got our first content for our first tab. Now what we're going to do to make life easy is we're going to come up to the top here. We're going to click to sort of select this entire column section. We're going to right click on there. We're going to say copy. Now we finish with that. We're going to close this down, exit to our dashboard and we've done with that first template. So now we're going to go back to save templates, back to section, and we're going to create a new section. So we say add new. This time we're going to call this historic projects. And we'll say create our template. Now to make our lives easier, we can close this window down. And now because we've copied, we can just paste this in. So we're going to paste over this area. You can see if you choose paste, that'll paste in all those projects. Now obviously this is still showing and using that query for all the current projects. So all we need to do is come up, click, we're going to come down then to where it says query and we're going to change the term current from there. We're going to get rid of that and we're going to just put, just put hist. Oops, let's try that again. Hist. Let that search through and there's historic. So that now shows only the ones that have been tagged as historic. Now this is a really simple example. If you wanted to, you could include multiple different things. So you could have a term and you could have an author, for example, or you could use multiple different terms. Or if you sort of want to exclude lots of things, you could come to the exclude option and you could exclude the things that you wanted to. You can even set an offset in there. So if you want to exclude everything from the second on, so the first result would show up, everything else would be excluded. You could do things like that. We don't need to for this example, but those options are there should you want to. So let's just publish this one. We've got everything set up in there now. So we've got the templates set up for our content. What we need to do now is create the tab section and then we can reference those. So let's come back out of this, exit to our dashboard. Once out of here, we're going to come back into pages and all pages. We're going to come back to our project history and we're going to edit that. Now we're going to start working with Elementor. So let's open up Elementor so we can start editing this page. And what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this title at the top because I'm using the hello theme and that by default puts that information in there. So let's just get rid of that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create the tab section. So I'm going to come back out. We're going to find the tabs. So we're going to just do a search. And there we go. There's our tabs. So we're going to drag and drop that over. There's tab one. There's tab two. So what we can do is we can call tab one current projects. We're going to do is we're going to get rid of that text that's in there and i'm going to come back and show you how we can actually put in the information that we want so don't worry about that i'm going to get the second one i'm going to change this now to historic projects and there we go so we've now got our two tab sections again i'm going to get rid of that information from there so we're going to update our page now we need to have a way of pulling in that data from those layouts so how can we do that well it's quite easy actually Let's come back out of this section. Let's exit to our dashboard. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the template section. I'm going to open up the save templates in a new tab. Now, if we take a look, Elementor Pro gives us this short code, and this short code references any of our saved templates. Now, because we chose sections, they're going to be very, very simple and basic. So what I can do is there's a historic, there's our current. So let's choose the current, right click and copy that from there. Come back over now, and we're going to edit that page, that project history page with our tabs on. Once you've done that, we're going to select our first tab. We're going to open that up. What we can do now is we can come over to the text section and we can just drop in that short code. Now, don't worry about the fact that it's only showing the actual short code itself. It's just the way that Elementor works. It doesn't display the content inside the editor. Come over to our historic projects. We're going to do the same thing again. Switch to the text tab, come back over to our save templates. This time we're going to copy this short code, jump back over. And we're going to paste that into there. So we've now got both our tabs set up. So let's just update that page. And once we've done that, we can preview it. So let's click on preview page. And there we go. There's our current project. There's our historic project. So we've now created a multi-section tab with dynamic content inserted into it, all done through simply using tags. And then we can filter that data out. And this is just one simple technique on how we can leverage the power of WordPress. We can use tags and things like that alongside what we can do with the template structure inside Elementor Pro. 
So hopefully what this will demonstrate is that with a little bit of planning and a little bit of thought, you can get a lot more creative without relying upon third party plugins to do simple things. Now, this is just scratching the surface of the kind of thing that you can do. And I've leveraged this kind of power a lot in the new WP Touch website. So I'm using this technique myself in various different ways. But just remember, tags can be incredibly powerful and they can really open up a ton of possibilities on how you organize and structure your content. But also how you can use that templating system inside Elementor Pro and you can get a lot more creative with what might first seem pretty boring and mundane widgets inside Elementor. So hopefully, like I say, this has opened up your eyes to some of the possibilities you can do. I'd love to find out the kind of things you've done with this. If you've used these techniques in the past yourself or other techniques similar to this, share those in the comment section below. Let's all start learning great ways of leveraging the power of Elementor Pro and WordPress together to get fantastic websites. Speaking of getting fantastic websites, if you want to learn more, check out the videos that we have on this channel. There are tons of videos to get you up to speed with WordPress, and you can see a couple of those on screen right now. As always, I'd love to get your feedback. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Perfectly fine. But let me know in the comment section what you did or didn't like about this video. As always, all applicable links are down below in the description. And my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.